creating a culture of love. I want to live to 125, but yeah. as drug-free as possible. Excuse me, sir? What? Holy shit, this is America. I know. Don't want to say names, but... No way, no. Okay. <laughs> yeah? Hey guys, how you guys doing? Welcome to the show. This is Live Through Love, and today we've got Candace Craig. Hey, hi. She's amazing, <laughs> and I can't wait to have this conversation and talk about dancing, health things, what you're advocating for, just all around. Who are you? And like, I love how you're showing up in the world. So let's go. What's up? My name is Candace Craig, and do you want me to give me a little spiel? Yeah, I want a little spiel. Let the people know who you are. Okay, my name is Candace, and I am an entrepreneur, dancer, singer, artist, creative, and I am also a PCOS advocate now, which we'll talk about that later. But um, I'm just all about health, wellness, and love is definitely something a through line for my whole entire life, yeah. and so I feel. Very honored to be here today, and I'm excited to chat with you about all things. Yeah, no, thank you. So, East Coast, West Coast, grew up in Miami. I've spent a lot of time as a kid in Miami. Almost every summer we went down there. Mm -hmm. My godfather had a, a brother down there, and we would stay in the apartment. So, I'm well-versed in uh, Miami culture. That's lit. And I feel like with the colors and stuff, if you were to tell me you were from Miami, I'd be like, I get it. But I guess... I guess color can be West Coast too, but I like it. I can like, be. <laughs> I, I, I wore a little color for you. Normally, I'm like black. You know, I almost wore black, and I was like, this kind of, I'm going to wear blue. Yeah, no, I like. I, I love, love, a good love color. the denim look. Thank you. Denim on um, denim. Can't go wrong. So, I'm Colombian. So, that's okay. probably where some of that comes okay. from. Okay. Okay. I understand now. Yeah, because there's a lot of Colombians in Miami. Yes, there is. All my friends are Latina from different parts. Mm -hmm. Different parts. So you grew up mixed heritage. You're mm -hmm. Haitian, you're Cubana, mm -hmm. you grew up in Miami. How did that lead to dancing? Oh my gosh, it is dance. Exactly. It's the culture, it's the food, it's the family, it's the love, it's the... Um, dance is part of me. I've literally started since I was a kid in my parents' living room. I mean, in, our, in our, my family's living room and I would make my parents sit down um, and I would charge them 25 cents to Amazing. watch the spirit. Yeah, yeah, since the beginning of time. Like whenever they would have friends over, I would be like, okay guys, intermission from whatever soccer you're watching, it's time for the performance. And I would go get ready, get my little costume and um, charge everybody some money to see me perform. And it started from that. I did gymnastics for a little bit and then that was a little too scary for me because mm. of the vault and all that stuff but the yeah. dance floor always for some reason when the music came on it was like i was doing the most on the floor so we're like we got to do something with this so um yeah so i've just been dancing my whole entire life and i trained professionally ballet jazz modern hip-hop tap you name mm. it i did it competition girl and um i graduated high school and I actually got to do my first professional job at 17 with um, P. Diddy for the MTV Music Awards. And I was oh, like, amazing. oh, I think I'm going to do this yeah. for a living. I don't know how much of a living we can make of this, but um, there's something about performance and acting in, and just being in the performance space that has always lit me up and made me feel like I had some type of purpose. Mm. So dance is, it comes from the family and it roots out into everything that I do now. And it literally is the baseline for every single thing I do in my life, still to this day. Mm. Going into my 30s, going, you know, being a fiance and growing, <laughs> hopefully growing my family one day. And I feel like dance has been my therapy. And it's just, it's my first love. That's amazing. And my family was was part of that, and they're the reason for that. I mean, even my father, um, he's also a painter, but he's also a musician. He played. He would just play the piano. He would just sit and sing to me. Those kinds of things um, have always resonated with me. Yeah. And I feel like he has a lot to do with the musical background 
yeah. where I'm coming and from. And there, there's stuff that's naturally in us. Like yeah. dancing's an art form. It's human expression. It's yep. a language. So that's one of the ways you communicate with the world. Absolutely. And being able to do that. I always like to say I'm not really a dancer. No, everybody's a dancer. No, I... Everybody's a dancer. I've traveled the world. I've traveled the world and I've literally... The one thing I did learn is that everyone loves to dance everyone loves food mm -hmm. and everyone smokes weed yeah. <laughs> no matter where you are in the world those three things are the three common denominators and it's, it's taken this long to make weed legal right uh, yeah I, we'll get there hopefully one day fully legal yeah. around the world just because it chills people out but it came from earth right yeah just that's like why that's why it's the organic stuff yeah it's a natural medicine we, so we so it. what was it like you know on live through love we talk about all things love mm -hmm. and one of these pillars that i always harp on is like self-love you know mm -hmm. sometimes we have these conversations inside of us like well i don't love myself and we're seeking the world to love us i know that was something mm -hmm. i've always dealt with mm -hmm. you know i mean I grew up like this, athlete, successful, whatever, but I would find my things in other ways. And I know speaking with other dancers or performers or people in highly objectified careers, mm -hmm. like how does the self-love conversation work there? And, and you know, with, with health, with diet, mental health, nutrition, it, was that a thing in the dancing space? Absolutely. And at the time, I didn't even know what I was even doing. I was literally just trying to remember the steps mm -hmm. and make sure that I wasn't letting my teammates down or anything like that. Wasn't I didn't even understand the concept of self-love until later. But I will say that I never battled it either. Mm. Uh, my family did a really good job at making me feel loved no matter what. And my parents killed it when you know, auditions and things like that. And I wouldn't get the, I wouldn't get the job or things like that. And they would always, I used to be like, you guys love me so much more than I even knew. Like you loved me when I didn't even know who I was or who that I could do anything for yeah. you. You know what I mean? You gave, you gave me so much. So I will say that I had a very blessed childhood in that space. Mm -hmm. And I think that's helped me be able to do the things that I do now. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely never, it wasn't perfect. And I, I've i struggled with self-love um, more so in my recent life because of the diagnosis with PCOS. And mm -hmm. for anybody that doesn't know what PCOS is, it's polycystic ovarian syndrome. It happens to one out of five women and it happens to women that of the reproductive age. And we don't know where it comes from. And as of right now, scientifically, there's no cure. So it affects us, um, our ovaries, but it affects way more mm -hmm. than our ovaries. Um, it's the number one reason for infertility. And oh. it has so many other more annoying side effects that affect our skin, affects our eating, affects our um, skin, hair, and it's just a whole bunch of things that um, it's just not it's something you don't want. <laughs> um, but tapping into that, it's been like a crazy journey with the PCOS mm -hmm. and not being able to control your body. And it also controls our weight. Mm -hmm. So I work out a lot you know, with the dancing and also being in the gym all the time mm -hmm. and being so used to just, okay, we have a shoot in two days. I know how to drop or I need to, you know, the camera yeah. always adds a couple of pounds. Deep I know off. what to do. <laughs> yeah. I know how to, I've always known how to figure it out and I'm not shy to eating clean and putting in extra work to make sure that I feel my best yeah. to be able to perform. And when that wasn't really working for me, it was really tough that self, I really had to understand what self love was mm -hmm. and understand that I'm still me inside of this body, no yeah. matter what. And this is my tool, this is my temple and I have to still pour into her. And um, so that was definitely probably one of the hardest times of my life, stepping into my thirties mm -hmm. and, and, and understanding that self love, like it, you, you gotta pour into yourself yeah. and it, it's important. And, and also having the, the right people around you to make sure that you can kind of stay mm -hmm. above water. So let's talk about that a little bit. Um, PCOS, one in five women. Yeah. Um, I did a lot of research knowing you were coming to figure out, oh, what is this? Mm -hmm. You know, when Demetra first told me about you, 
I thought it was people of color and something. I'm like, what is PCOS? What are we going to be talking about here? So I had to literally look into it. I'm like, oh. And I had a friend that, that had some issues and suffered from some things. And she thought she wasn't going to be able to have kids. Yep. Luckily, she has two amazing, beautiful boys now. But you never know what's happening. And let's let's blanket it, not just that syndrome, because there's probably a lot of other things that are undiagnosed. Yep. And we're not treating correctly. Yeah. And let's really talk about you're now an advocate for health and curing or doing work on PCOS, or I'm assuming you've gone through the ringer on the insurance situation and the health system, which I've been going through with mm -hmm. my wife and situations that mm -hmm. we've got going on. So it's like, how does that all play a role on your mental health, right? This whole process has been crazy from just the internal to then finally saying something about it to then getting all the responses back mm -hmm. from women around the world. Like I have a following of over 2.5 million people across platforms mm -hmm. and I've danced my way through it and I've um, performed and I've always been this performer, okay? You've been a doer. You've I've been, been a, a yeah. doer and entertainment because that's genuinely what I love to do. Mm -hmm. So to put it out there to begin with because it's something that was in me for a while and I was kind of like, okay, let me figure this out. Oh, no, nothing's working. Okay, let me yeah. go get a doctor. Nobody's diagnosing me. So now that I know what it is, PCOS is the number one misdiagnosed syndrome as well. So women are walking around here. They don't know that they have it. We don't yeah. even know it exists. When my doctor told me about it, I didn't even know it existed. Um, but, but that's what kind of made me have to come out about it because when I found out, I genuinely was like, I don't, if I don't know about it, because I, I feel like I'm, I, I'm pretty hip to the health situation yeah. and just conscious about it. A lot of women probably don't know about it either. So w the responses came in, and they were just flooded with women mm -hmm. empowerment. Everybody's coming together. Well, I'm dealing with this too. I'm having. Um, excess hair. I'm having um, a loss of hair on my head. I am having irregular periods. Uh, so stuff that's really personal. Yeah. Things that you don't want to talk yeah. about, you know? Shame, and the stuff you carry shame around. Yes. Yeah. And things that are not our fault either, you mm -hmm. know? So I think coming out about it really helped me kind of just be able to understand that this is a worldwide problem. This isn't something that um, is something that we did. They don't You're even not know where it's broken. They're, yeah, you know, it's a thing. Yeah. yeah, and 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 coming out about it was probably one of the best things I ever did because it helped me tap into myself even more. Mm -hmm. It helped me tap into more, even like the craziest health, like understanding food and phytonutrients and mm -hmm. things that I never really paid attention to before. Um, and with that, you know, helping other women become diagnosed or go to doctors that until they get an answer you know yeah. help them get diagnosed and with that clarity it just kind of helps us out and also being able to speak to congress recently to That's tell amazing. them That's about amazing you took the time and energy to go do that too no i had to i didn't have a choice i really i was scared out of my mind yeah um i never thought in a million years i would ever be able to speak to any type of congress legislature I, I just, that's not really where not I saw really myself going. Mm -mm, right. didn't, it's not anything I wanted to do either. Yeah. Um, but I felt like I literally left it in God's hands and I was like, God, you just have to be able to speak through me for everyone else. Mm. Um, the women came in by the boatload with support, you know, for me when they did find out that I had it and they were like, mm. you don't understand what you're doing. You're helping me. You're helping my kids. My, 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 my daughter is, um, 16 years old and she's experiencing these things how what can we do to help so honestly the people coming together helped me to be able to help them so yeah. the voice and the platform that i've been able to build through performance i'm mm. so thankful for um but ultimately just being able to help other women through this process i think has been the the most it's been an amazing ride and has definitely filled my self-love cup yeah no and that's amazing that's why i want to talk about this more so in the capacity of character and mm. taking a stand right you've, you've been an entertainer you've been a performer 
very physical, body aware yeah. athlete, right? Yeah. That's as a human, that's how you show up. And a woman, and all of a sudden you're like, why am I gaining weight? Why are all these things happening? Let's take the the syndrome out of it. But like, what are the conversations going through your head? It's like I should stop eating, or I'm getting old. You know what is happening here? So that's where it's, you know, things happen to us. It's not just because you got old things onset because we get older but like how do we start navigating these waters of like yeah my metabolism is a little slower or you know what do i need to do about going and get this checked out or getting in tune with your body because were you ever misdiagnosed as oh it's a thyroid thing oh you have type 2 diabetes now i could imagine some of those symptoms triggering all these other things we know about the questions just started rolling in and everybody self-diagnoses you like i went in for a thyroid issue because everybody told me oh it's probably a thyroid issue go fly to florida and go and they literally gave me a paperback saying your thyroid is fine you're fine um go work out harder and eat clean literally i have the paper so it's the biggest mental and um for 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 me i just it was the it was the ment- the mental of not being able to what really messed me up to be honest was like this shouldn't really be an issue yeah because it's vanity it's the way i look yeah so I, there's so much bad things going on in this world Mm -hmm. really my problems and my issues really don't matter and they don't live up to all the other things that are going wrong and some people are dying some people that's where my mind went like you really can't be mad about this just figure it out and 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 navigate through it day after day after day turn it to a year turn Mm -hmm. it you know so it just kept on coming and it was only when i sat and thought like something's really, really, truly wrong with me. I, I literally did yeah. eight week programs at a time and nothing was happening. Imagine you do eight week programs and you're eating vegetables and you gain weight. No, How I, I would lose psycho. my mind. I felt crazy. I felt crazy. And I had, I was crying every day. I'm like not a depressed person naturally. So I'm like, what is this feeling? This depression, this is, mm-hmm. this is different. I don't understand this. And I'm in my thirties now. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to manage this. Um, so it was just more of like a mental trying to get through it. And then mm-hmm. when the diagnosis did happen, I literally celebrated almost. <laughs> yeah. I was like, thank you. We have, some- thank you. I'm yeah. not crazy. And my, Feelings are mm-hmm. valid. And being able to share this with my family, like everybody was like, I'm so like, how mm-hmm. can we fix this? What is the cure? Even now doing the research to find a cure. I'm talking yeah. to scientists and I'm talking to doctors and we're all trying to figure this thing out. And, um, but yeah, the mental mess up that happens when your body isn't working, it's, it's, it's okay because we live in this body and our brains, you know, are, we're valuable. Our Each, journey our and our journey life, is, we have this to take us through this. Yes, yeah. and we have to take care of it, and which we do. If you do, you expect it to, to show up, for, show you. up yeah. for you. And, you know, I'm just, I just feel blessed that I've been able to have the right people in my corner to be able to push me through it. So that thing, like, I really want to talk about the mental about this and the emotional well-being, because I think a lot of us, a lot of the listeners, we go through these cycles of, I am not crazy. Like, I'm feeling something in my gut. Like, and we can apply it to everything, not just health, business, whatever, Mm -hmm. relationships. You know, sometimes we just, we don't want to have that hard conversation with a friend, even though inside, you know, like, I'm not the problem. Like, we have to have, but all these things that are going on. So it's like really not only realizing, because sometimes my wife's like, I was telling you earlier about the, the thing she's going to go through. She's like, I'm not crazy. I know this was leading to something. I'm mm. always tired. Mm-hmm. I'm always fatigued. Like I sleep so many hours. I eat really clean. Like why are these questions happening? Why am I feeling this way? And I think a lot of us feel like that. We recently had a miscarriage and we shared it. And the amount of people that reached out and said, thank you for sharing that. Like that helped my wife, obviously, through it. That helped all of us. I had men that shared on my end because obviously the male and female role within that conversation is completely different. Um, To me, it's like, how do I show up for my wife? It didn't happen to me. It is a we thing. And I always say it's we, but it's your body. right? This is happening to you. Yeah. Um, You have a partner now. Like what was his conversation going through that? 
Yeah. <laughs> he was like, he's an athlete. So, and he's seen, he's, we've been together six years. So he knows that I, my normal routine when it comes to being able to lose weight or, or fix my skin or all the things. So mm -hmm. he knows me very, very well. So when I did announce that something is going on, I'm feeling crazy. Um, he was like, well, he kind of pushed me to go and figure out with professionals what's going on. And when I did come back and tell him that it was polycystic ovarian syndrome and it affects fertility and all the things, to be honest, his, his reaction was extremely supportive and same. He was like, what can I do? Is there anything I can do? You know, but yeah. a lot of it is, is guys so, are fixers. It's, We're yeah, wired to, like, we want to fix this. It's such a personal thing, but I will say though, that we haven't started trying it. And I don't want to put that extra pressure on myself. I'm yeah. trying to do it for the things that make me feel, you know what I mean? When we do start trying, um, that's a different conversation, but yeah. we haven't tried yet. And knowing that it is the number one reason for infertility is like, scary. it's I scary. I want to have kids. I want to have a lot of kids, you know? We, we want to have a lot of kids. Um, but I genuinely, Though that's just something I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put myself mm -hmm. through that to worry myself and drive myself crazy over something that I haven't even we don't know yeah. yet and and I've heard a lot of success stories as well with PCOS patients because all the people that came to support and you know found mm -hmm. out they're like I have two kids I've been diagnosed with PCOS and yes we've had a lot of uh, miscarriages as well and mm -hmm. you know going through real life things yeah um, but but there's been a lot of success so I think just trying to stick with God and also stay in a positive mm -hmm. mindset, which is part of the self care, which is taking my bath, my goddess bath. I put yeah. these like concoctions together, the love potion. I put everything into, you know, I, I pour into myself with, with that being said, it's just, it's just been, it's been crazy with having Omar be a part of this process with me. And I'm so thankful yeah. to have him. No, it's amazing it. that you have an amazing partner to help you out in this. You yeah. Know? I've been able to, you know, weather the storm with my wife or yeah. make the leap to become this because of her partners are really important. Yeah. But also taking a step back was back to that share. Like we shared. I found out my mom had a miscarriage before me. Wow. We found out so many people had miscarriages. So it's important for us to share. So that day that you took a stand, you know, what was going through your head with like, look, I'm going to publicly share it. I have a platform. I'm just going to put it out there what was the the main reason just to share what was the update with you or were you like i'm taking a stand for women and then the flood of the reaction afterwards right it was the fact that i didn't know what pcos was and it happens to one out of five women that's a lot of people that's mm -hmm. a lot of women when i did get diagnosed that's when it changed because i couldn't tell anybody anything because I didn't know what was going on. So speaking out about something to have no answers to then get a reaction from people that could send me whichever mm -hmm. way I was, I was, that was my way of protecting myself and being able to figure, figure it out, you know? But I think to answer your question, like I think the diagnosis, understanding that I literally looked at the doctor and I was like, so how do we fix this? And, and why don't people know about this? And she was, looked me in my eye and was like, I don't know. I don't know. There's no cure right now. And we don't know why they don't talk about it. We don't know why women are dealing with this silent in, in silence. And the minute I had that conversation mm -hmm. with her, I stormed out of there. I went home. I made myself a, another video just to speak to myself. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, when you are six months from now, we're going to look back at this video. And I'm crying in the video. I'm, I'm giving myself all the emotions so that I can remember wherever this journey is going to take yeah. me. Um, and when I was ready, um, I decided to share it. And I think I even shared it like on my story. I don't even know that I was even confident enough to be like, Hey everyone, hard post. Yeah. Here's the reels of you me and my, yet. yeah, no, it definitely didn't happen that way. It kind of creeped in. Um, but the support, the minute I got one message, mm -hmm. two messages, three messages, the love started pouring. I think I'm dealing with that situation or 
my sister has this or my mom had to go through this mm -hmm. or this makes all kinds of sense. Can you elaborate? Can you tell us more? So I start to learn it more and I'm trying to figure it out too. Mm -hmm. So right now it's still the road, the road to reversal. Um, I've started a brand new page for, for the PCOS. It's PCOS with Candice and um, all of the people that are mm -hmm. on my main pages that want to learn about this mm -hmm. with me alongside with me because i'm not a scientist and i'm not a doctor at the end of the day i'm just a patient just trying to be healthy and be yeah. my healthiest self yeah. so with the love it's it's pouring over into that page and when i tell you i've got this many on this page i've got this many on this page because it's brand new but the amount of support in my community that i've built in this short it's amount of time deeper. is it's so deep and i love i love them so much yeah. and I even brought them into the meeting that I spoke to with Congress. I was like, hey, hey guys, I'm about to go speak to Congress. What are our issues? Talk to me, tell me what our top 10, top 10 issues are. Mm -hmm. And um, I went in there and, and told Congress like, hey, I got some people that are backing me. And it's mm -hmm. not just me here sitting here talking to you today. It's the support, it's the squad, mm -hmm. it's the homies and it's my community that's, that we're all looking for better education, mm -hmm. better research. We need better care. We need a cure. Government, help us. Because the funding even, which I learned, there's like 0.01% that is going to funding for PCOS. When all the other diseases have millions of dollars, PCOS is literally at the bottom of the list. Mm -hmm. And the only reason why they're listening to us is because it is a reproductive sit situation. And they're not even tapping into the other symptoms but collectively, that's what makes PCOS. It's all of the symptoms. There's different symptoms. That's why it's not technically a disease. It is a syndrome because it's, it's, the, it's so not, it's hard to, to be tangible. Mm -hmm. But if you experience those symptoms, then you are diagnosed. So what are the symptoms? There's the sim five yeah, there's, there's five symptoms. And I might mess this up as far as order goes. But um, excess hair, irregular periods, um, uncontrollable weight gain hair loss and fatigue mm. and then there's more but those are like the main ones imagine excess hair you now have a beard but you lost your hair on your head yeah and then you're just continuing to gain weight even though you're really trying to just not do that or uh, there's nothing wrong with people gaining weight all for it for me personally uh, i like to be healthy and my healthy self uncontrollable itself, without uncontrollable like, I'm not in control of my body and it's we're we're now at risk for diabetes for heart disease like we're at risk for a whole bunch of other things mm -hmm. and so now that's why i think they're starting to listen and and understand that this is way deeper than just people trying to lose weight and that's the whole thing about mm -hmm. it it's not a lazy girl syndrome it's it's really a lot more than that and it's a hormonal imbalance that's exactly what it is and our hormones are triggered back here mm -hmm. and something's going on testosterone estrogen all of our hormones are out of whack and that's what's making yeah. things go haywire and the support from everybody and uh, the the team and and my community has literally got me to this point where i'm even comfortable even coming over here talking to you about it and kind of spreading the word about yeah. PCOS. I'm currently working on a guide yeah. um, for my girls. To me, it's important to acknowledge you for stepping up as a leader. You know, you found something that's happening to you and you're like, you could just go deal with it privately. Yeah. But you're like, no, I have a platform. Let me go lead. Yeah. But also it's the awareness because sometimes it's like, eh, thyroid, eh, I'm old, eh, yeah. this, you know, as we've been saying. It's the fight. But, you know, I do want to transition into other parts of your life. So I'll acknowledge you, one, for stepping up, going to Congress. I'm excited to see where you go with this battle because I know you've got fire and passion for it. The Road to Reversal. That's what it is. I'm trying to, to reverse reversal. it. Yeah. It's that's, a good name, too. I know. The book is called Because a syndrome, reversal. technically a syndrome could be temporary. And yeah. maybe at some point they figure out that there's a trigger. Yeah. We also know that our food is getting worse. Mm -hmm. What the, you know, quality of life and certain things are getting worse. There's things in our water. There's plastics and things. There's all kinds of things in our things that can affect us. Which one of those things is triggering PCOS, yep. cancer, thyroid, diabetes, all these things that we're now, you know, suffering from. And we are living longer. And I want to live to 125. But yeah. as 
drug free as possible. I don't yeah. want to be on every statin and blood thinner and <laughs> yeah. you know, I want to be healthy. I want to play with my grandkids. Absolutely. I've been doing so much research on you know, we we get di- uh, we get medication from the doctors, which is great to help us kind of get to our goals, but they're just band-aids. So, I've done a lot of research in the mother earth just trying to get us herbs drinking the water like you said I'm, now i only drink alkaline water i used to drink tap water i used to be like that's free right come on run yeah. me the tap water like don't don't bring me the bottled water that's going to be super expensive now i understand like I, it's made me dive in way deeper and i'm like finding that like i love this space that i'm in i love being able to understand why i'm putting this food in my body and what kind of nutrients it has and protein and i'm telling you i literally people that used to count their macros and all that stuff that mm-hmm. used to just be too much for me and just be like just give me the protein the protein and the chicken that i was eating because that was the only protein there was yeah, yeah. guys there's more to protein than just meat i'm just letting you know right now vegetables actually have protein in it yep. and you can reach the same amount of protein with just vegetables i'm not calling i'm not telling anybody but eat to be plant-based, vegan, or anything like that, to each his own. But um, we can get all the nutrients and medicine mm-hmm. we need from the earth. I genuinely believe that, um, and that's why I've com- I've changed my life just within this past two years. Mm-hmm. Completely re- refocusing my brain to really understand and get down to the bottom of it. Because mm-hmm. another thing that I learned, I'm not going to be nerdy anymore but another thing that i learned (laughs) is that um our bodies regenerate themselves Mm -hmm. so you know your skin you don't have the same skin from three weeks ago this is brand new skin it it flaked off it naturally wants to be its own regenerative situation it wants to be its own doctor so your body wants to work for you Mm -hmm. and so when you put those phytonutrients in your body you're giving yourself a better chance you're giving your cells better communication to speak to each other so that they can do their job and therefore that's why everything that i'm putting in my body right now is to help my body to get the shit out of my body yeah no no and that's good that you're learning that now you know i I was an athlete growing up and i remember in in football we're like we just gotta eat calories so Mm -hmm. it was panda express and baja fresh two burritos double orange chicken double white rice plow it in you know, that was almost 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah. That's not how I eat now it to get the be. calories in. It like, can't be. I make way better choices and feel way better. It's like you would eat that and then you'd be like, uh, I'm sleeping yeah. in class. Yeah, you know, annoying. But before the mobility now, the stretching now, right? When you were dancing versus what they're doing now for recovery, it's just athletics has changed. The way we're operating and dealing with our body has changed. Yeah. But, um, this, this is just a, an identity question now. So I want to shift a little bit. So you grew up as a dancer, professionally dance, mm-hmm. you know, with rappers and music videos, like the dancer life. When we mm-hmm. say dancer, you're like... Tour life. The tour, and that's hard. Yeah. I know a couple other friends that are, are in that space. It's fun. It's, it was fun, especially just being able to tour the world and actually get paid for it and mm-hmm. then have these amazing artists and being able to learn from them that was probably one of the best experiences and like for the timing too like 17 18 Mm -hmm. what let's let's go let's see the world i want i learned so much from being able to do that so what what were some of the places that you got to experience and go i got i mean first thing that comes to mind is paris because i remember just looking out the window and just being like how do we How do we get here through something that I genuinely love doing, you know? Um, Shout out to Pharrell Williams and NERD because they brought me around the world two times, okay? Let's go. I love them so much. They would always just be, my only direction on that tour was do what the music tells you to do. And then he would also just be like, we don't need a lot of makeup. I don't I don't care for it. I just want you to be yourself and dress your, like yourself, get up on stage and do what the music tells you to do. That's amazing. Excuse me, sir? I've heard some real controlling things. Oh, sometimes. and I've had those experiences too. Yeah. I'd rather talk about the positive, of course. Of course, but yeah. Pharrell Williams and and the team and everybody in that NERD camp, um, they showed us the world. The the musicians, even like everybody was open, had open arms. The love showing, really how to to do this tour life, you know, and being able to sleep, wake up, get on the bus, do all the things, um, and still maintaining some type of healthy eating mm-hmm. while you go around the world. But um, Paris was definitely one of those places that I looked outside and I was like, oh, 
this is this is really really cool but i was even a, i forget the name of the place but the sun doesn't go down there's a few places so it depends okay. if you're by the pole i feel like um i want to say it depends on the time of the I year i want to say greenland Greenland, Iceland? Iceland. Iceland. I think we went there once for a festival. We performed at three in the morning and it was daylight outside. I was like, this is crazy. You cannot write this in a book. Like, this is absolutely insane. I've been so, in Alaska during that. Okay. I'm, oh, out, I'm out at 3 a.m. Like, Alaska's cool. See, I have. This is trippy. It's like daytime. It's, oh, oh, I live on the west side right here. So mm -hmm. it's always overcast gray. Mm -hmm. That's how nighttime is at a certain time in Alaska or. Iceland or Greenland or all these other places that are kind of close to the pole. Insane. Yeah. Such a crazy, cool experience. And then touring with different people. We did more of like American tours and like doing award shows here. Um, and those tours were definitely draining. Those were the ones with choreography and um, other teammates, other t dancer, dancer, artist, artists. And they, <laughs> crazy experiences. Um, I don't want to talk about one of them, but yeah. Don't want to say names, but I can't do it. But no, that's fine. We don't crazy, you, you guys know who I've been on tour with. And if you know, that's a female. And you know, it's just like crazy, crazy, crazy stories, but definitely cool to be able to travel and do what I love with meeting new people around the world. And also, to be honest, even touring the United States, like, Places I've never gone to, Chicago, like random places. You know, I'm from Miami, came to LA, been to New York, but everything in between was kind of just a blur. So that's how I was for a long time. I'm born and raised in LA, did Miami, New York, Seattle, Chicago, Austin. And then I, a mural took me to Clarksdale, Mississippi. Yeah, you're like- And I'm like, holy shit, this is America. Yeah. And we drove through Memphis and Arkansas. Exactly. And like, this is America. And, what bothers me sometimes is we're so quick to fix the rest of the world. Like, let's look at our country. Yeah. We have we need so much yeah. here. Yes, there needs to be more wells in Africa. I get it, but there's actually places here where they don't have clean water. Yep, yep. And that's mind blowing yeah. to me. Like, let's focus at home. Yeah, for sure. America's America is has so much work to do. Absolutely, and be, being able to see it all mm -hmm. through dance has been everything it's i don't like know what, who i would be with travel that. and play through life for a long time yeah and to be honest i feel like i'm still doing it yeah. but i decided to stop i remember when i got off a long tour i think we did an asia run with um with an artist and it was really cool because i never been in japan i was eating sushi it was like the great oh, i love japan yeah i mean that one is top three for sure um did you try the raw chicken sushi i refuse no way no oh, they have raw that chicken would have sushi. sent me straight to the restroom <laughs> I couldn't absolutely do it. not i couldn't do it raw chicken no i didn't see that on the menu i was eating ramen every day i was i love ramen oh ramen's great ramen's one of the things that um it's like a warm hug i can't get rid of yeah ramen um you know, I eat healthy now and all the things, but I found some spelt ramen noodles on Amazon. Mm. So spelt is alkaline, which can is good for my diet. So mm. I've found my my little alternative for, for oh, ramen. There you go. But, um, being in Asia, what was I talking about? I forgot. Being Traveling, in, playing. You oh, Japan. and yeah. So I, after that tour, I decided to um, to come back and I was like, I want stability. I want to be able to wake up mm. in the morning, have my coffee. At the time I drink coffee, I don't drink it anymore have my day be able to do what i need to do and kind of have a little bit more structure so i feel like the touring life for me was great during a certain period of my of my mm -hmm. life for learning soaking it all in seeing the world and that there was definitely a point when i was like that tour life i'm just i'm just tired right now and yeah. i really want to just focus on and bettering me who i am as a person what i'm going to do in this world mm -hmm. and also focus on what is my purpose because we can dance all day, but it doesn't mean that I need to be dancing for someone. Yeah. At the end of the day, I'm, I'm pouring into the artist, you know, I'm being able to dance on stage for me, but you know, it's for the artist at the end of the day. So I wanted to create my own platform, What's my own stage. What's your next evolution of yes. Candace, you know? Absolutely. So you and asked I, what, what's next? Yeah, I definitely did. And it was very early on. I could, I could still be doing this and really truly until probably like I'm 40, God willing. But I, I, I took a step back and sat myself down. It was like, what do we want to do? What, what do we feel like our purpose is? So 
I'm just like, I still am a performer at heart and there's nothing that's ever going to, my dad always says you were born to perform. Like that's just why we're here. That's been a gift. Yeah. I can't say that, you know, I've had many others, but this specific thing, being able to perform has been my main thing. So without letting that go, what does that look like after yeah. dancing for artists? And thank God for social media. People want to say what they want about social media. For me personally, it changed my life. The world is my stage. I still get to perform, but yeah. now I'm dancing either in my living room, on somebody's pavement, somewhere on some sidewalk. Mm -hmm. I'm still performing here on, on, on wherever I get booked for shows. Like dance is everywhere now. Mm -hmm. This was dance used to be only a background situation. You didn't know anything about dance and now thank god for youtube and being able to see these kids in class killing it yeah and TikTok. <laughs> TikTok, as as much as people want to be so mad about it there's way worse things that are going on in this world than than kids learning steps from social media like you know i i'm all for it um of course there's there's ups and downs when it comes to social media but for me personally it changed my life and helped me build my personal brand mm -hmm. so i've been able to start a brand a five six seven eight brand it's five six seven eight is a dance brand um it's called count me in and pretty much it's used to be when we all came together at the same time mm. to hit the same step so why not take that into the to the next step of my life and that's when i started my brand it started out just clothing because I would go on planes and then have to go to set and I would not be able to find like the outfit that I could do both in, you, you know, that kind of thing. Functional outfit. Functional, that... fully functional dance wear that's still cute because when you dance for Pitbull, honey, you have to come correct. <laughs> you got to come lashes done. Mr. Worldwide. Mr. Worldwide, Mr. 305. Yeah. Shout out to Pitbull. I love him till this day. He's still one of the first people that hired me as well. His music has so much energy. It's so it? much energy, so much fun. And he loves his people. He mm -hmm. comes into rehearsal. He embraces us. He gives us the most love. And he's also part of somebody that gave me a lot of confidence, even stepping into the dance space. So coming up with the brand, it was like a no brainer. I'm like, <laughs> this next step for me i also idolized j-lo too um and the way that she was able to use her dance background and be able to have so many other things outside of that and she's always been i would be lying to you if i didn't mention her name like jennifer yeah. lopez is i love her so much and obviously beyonce and rihanna as well but they're all business women right so how do we flip that how do we I also did music for a very long time. A lot of people either know or they don't, but I did it for 10 years. I was signed to Island Def Jam. And while I was touring, I was signed with a Amazing. girl Amazing. So I was touring with these artists, dancing for these people, but I was a signed recording artist. It was like the craziest kind of music thing. It was like fun. It was like girl group stuff, like pop, pop, pop hip hop. Just fun, fun dance music, um, pop, dan uh, dance driven. Mm -hmm. um, and we did we did really well we did x factor top 10 groups like when that went away i think that's when it was like okay we really need to figure out what we're doing here mm. so creating a brand and being able to express myself through video has been my therapy it's been amazing and having the platform grow it's like, oh, people mm -hmm. do love dance. People do love storytelling in a different way. I don't have to be dancing behind someone. Yeah. I get to tell my own story now. And it's kind of just grown from there. You know, I even now the the brand has grown to even um, it's grown to the beauty side. Um, I have a lash brand and JLo wore them the first time, the first collection that came out. That's so it's amazing. like it was like the showgirl collection. That's because that's who I feel like I am, a showgirl. And the ultimate showgirl wore them mm -hmm. first round of the drop. So the brand's been able to grow through the platform and everything just, like I said in the beginning, just has mm -hmm. a through line with, with dance. And I'm so appreciative of it. So let's recap this a little bit because, you know, pillars of love, we always, we're entrepreneurial, we're creators, we're health and wellness, mental wellness, but, you know, business building. I, I started mm. by, I painted a mural and a mural led to a mural and a mural and a painting and a print and clothing line and all these things. So you looked at Rihanna, Beyonce, Jayla, you're like, whoa, performers became business women. Yep. So, so that was like a shift of like, I can be both too, you know, yeah. people are showing up this way. And that's an identity now shift for you and realizing that. So you launch your brand 
expanded into beauty products and eyelashes and then somehow j-lo wears it yeah like i've had artists wear my stuff too or, or celebrities i'm like ooh. yeah doesn't necessarily mean that all it's of a sudden the sales, sales are pouring or anything. not one sale from j-lo's post it, it's it's cool for us but not like, one. Oh, hey yeah. no it was a personal thing it feels no, good because you like know that's someone that's like one of your heroes or one of your mentors that you look up to you're like wow she's got my stuff on i can imagine how cool that is because i see my stuff in certain places or someone's like dude your art's in this person's house i'm like i had no idea that's awesome it's it's like the coolest feeling i'm still a little kid like at heart you mm -hmm. know i feel like every, cardi b wore them too i love cardi I, that was a i think the second launch it was she wore them on christmas and with her kids and i'm mm -hmm. like how do we even get here and this is also has to go back to building a good foundation when you are working in these spaces these makeup artists that i've worked with through the dance community yeah. i became friends with them so that's my follow-up question like how does one lead to one that, thing lead to the other yeah the everything is connected i feel and with that brand specifically you know we started with just clothes when i did decide to do this scary leap over to the lash side and the beauty side was because one every time i would wear an outfit you would never catch me without a lash so something that was still true to me mm -hmm. i think what happens is you have to kind of really come back and have a, like a mirror and and really self-reflect like what do i love what what are things that i can't live without and then you can kind of mm -hmm. go from there and be able to branch out and test and mm -hmm. not everything has worked you know I've, I've done music for 10 years you don't know a single of mine no. you know and i love my songs the people that know the songs know them but it, it didn't work and that and that pivoting the, the scariest part is the pivot or the scariest part is not making it seem like you failed to yourself like i i can't accept that i i, I have a hard time with that yeah um so being able to just adjust and and really look at yourself in the mirror and see what you enjoy and things that make you feel like your highest self and when things kind of just the time around you kind of goes away mm -hmm. and drifts away those are kinds of things that i like to hone into to help me mm -hmm. in my business moves so how much of that is your intuition right it's i feel like it's, it's i mean it has to be i feel like all of it is my intuition my intuition is crazy i know that's why you're like i'm not crazy i know syndrome. i know yeah. i don't know if it's a woman thing i feel like it is no shade they say to women you. are more tapped into their intuition than men I feel clearly like but. when you are able to really look at yourself and understand your goddess energy and your goddess vibrations i know i sound crazy but it's genuinely what i've learned over the past few years and the elevation with just that concept has taken me so far and i trust myself also intuition it's also maybe my parents that instilled in me like i trust you i yeah, trust your decisions they your never yeah. yeah they never made me feel like the decisions i was making were bad or stupid or they maybe would gear me they're like you don't want to be a cop yeah <laughs> you don't want to do that you don't want to hold a gun in your hand all day and i'd be like yeah you're right i That's don't want to do that choice. i literally i remember my mom telling me that once i'm like i think i want to be a cop which is you know which would have been really cool my wife said that once she's like should i go be a cop I'm like yeah I don't know. You're like, ah, ah. I have a lot of cop friends. I know. No, no shade to no. cops at all. No, but for it's me in like my the, life. It's a personality. Like you have to be a special person yeah. to do all like you're a special person to be a dancer. You know, it's, it's all a unique thing. And that's why I feel like some things are God given a gift. And I would be putting the world down if I didn't if I didn't do, you know, what I was. I feel you like I was meant here to be. You can make your next dance video in a cop outfit. Yeah. See, I feel like I've done that before. I feel like Probably. I've, I've done all kinds of themes. That's why I love Halloween too. I, lo I, lo I love um, being able to do different kinds of themes, but shout out to all the cops out there. We love you. Yes, thank <laughs> you. Thank you so much for doing what you do because it's, it's special. My brother's a firefighter. It's like you're choosing to do this. Yep, you know? yep. Um, so you have all this belief in yourself, trust in yourself, and you are just being authentic to you. And, and, you know, what I'm trying to get through, I'm hearing this whole story, and ultimately it's like, you have always chosen love. You are choosing love over fear and everything by standing up and sharing your story, by seeking the knowledge, by going to Congress, by 
pivoting from dancer to what's next or this isn't my purpose but it is my love how do i continue moving that forward so i'm just hearing this 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 is the through line for me it's like you're being authentically you and i love it and and you know if more performers and artists and women and anyone in just general chooses that we can continue moving forward in that space doesn't mean it's easy doesn't mean it's easy at all but you can succeed and get through the lows and you're like you know what i'm gonna pivot but you have that athletic background in the dance too yep love is definitely the through line and i genuinely believe that love is probably one of the only things worth living for Mm. you know I'm still a sucker for those movies that make you cry at the end because it's love and Chicago. Um, um, I'm blanking on the name, not Chicago. What's the other musical? Moulin Rouge. Oh yes, I've watched it a few times. Moulin Rouge. All we need is love. I truly believe that, and without it, it's really yeah. like, what are we really doing here? You know. So I'm a sucker for a good tap- rom com and all that. Do you ever watch This Is Us? This Is Us. Is it a TV show? No. Have you seen? No, I haven't seen it. You should watch it. I cried every episode, basically. Really? My wife went out on the couch. <sighs> really? Look into it. I heard. I have seen show. it pop up. Okay, I'm gonna watch that. I think it's on Hulu. It's all out now. It's a okay. great show. Okay. But if you're a sucker for that kind of stuff, I am, of like course. It. Yeah. And it's not Titanic. It's not cheesy. Took me down. <laughs> and it's not cheesy. That's the other thing. Oh, yeah. Titanic. Yeah. So, so what's next for you? I'm actually writing my first book. So this is the pivot. This is a new thing for me. Mm-hmm. Um, writing my first book. It's a guide for the PCOS girlies to help us. Everything that I've learned pretty much. Is it memoir-ish, biography-ish, and this or purely for? No, it's a guide. So it's more like giving all the facts that I've learned about PCOS, mm-hmm. my experiences, and then also going into specifics because these this is what they've been asking me for. So every type of workout what i'm doing exactly self-love health mm. like mind body soul and then also going into the diet part of it exactly what alkaline foods are and why i'm doing what i'm doing mm-hmm. the things that i've learned from going to honduras um going to dr sebi's village and experiencing those foods and that life and coming back and taking the information from the doctors with the medications mm-hmm. kind of taking eastern and western medicine and kind of making them all come together um, to kind of give a guide to the to the women that have been asking. Um, so it's a little bit of this and a little bit of that. It's going to be, we're going to be able to, to write in there as well. So it's going to be a little bit of a journal. Mm. It's going to be really interactive with a lot of <laughs> facts, with a lot of science, with a lot of information. So it's a, li- it's a lot of everything, but I've been working on it for a very long time. And I'm f- so excited. We're about... 95 percent done wow it's gonna be great and so the um i'm just i'm just proud i'm proud of it i'm proud of i'm proud of um the journey i really thought i was gonna take two weeks to get it done because no yeah we, <laughs> i'm like this is one of these things that you just are like i'm just gonna start gonna let me just done, get it done but... i'll get it done in two weeks just like anything else but no this has been a, a long process and just continuing to learn and just I keep adding things because I keep learning new things. So I want everything to be in the book. So um, that's what I'm doing next. And I'm growing my platform. I'm continuing to to dance and continuing to perform in ways that that I know how. And I'm, an, I'm a fiance and trying to plan a wedding. And there you go. When's the wedding? We, August 18th is our anniversary, so it's going to be August 18th. We just don't know what year. <laughs> the, the, day, the day I propose is the same day we, like, one year later, wedding. So September 23rd. That's what we wanted. Yeah. You guys are so lucky. No, it's so stressful. This whole planning a wedding thing, listen, you think it's going to be one way in your mind, and then when it's actually time for me personally, when it's actually time, I'm just too indecisive. So I just want to... It, no, it's be able tough. to like enjoy it. I want to enjoy it, and I'm really not in a rush. To be honest, I'm not in a rush. To we're, we are not in a rush to get married. We know we love each other. We know we're gonna be together. So it is what it is. The wedding. Just more paperwork. Yeah, honestly, truly, we've even questioned like, what is 
marriage license. Like, why do people get married? Are we doing this for the government? Because if it's a government thing, yeah, taxes. Ta- is this is this gonna? But is this gonna save us money or is this not? Like, that's what actually kind of another conversation as to why that's we're just fair. kind of prolonging. You can also, if you really want, like, I used to be in finance for ten years. You can all like. Are we linking credit? Is his credit good? Is my credit good? Are we taking on each other's debt? Like, there's all kinds of all things. All kinds that of things people no don't one talk ever about. talk about. No. Like, religion? How are we going to raise our kids? Are you going to be religious? All of a sudden, you're going to be, you're like, we all grew up religious. Okay, I'm Christian. No, you're Catholic. Cool. How are we going to raise our kid? Oh, let you know, like we are now. All of a sudden, there's a kid. No, we go to church every Sunday now. Like, what? Where did this happen? Like, you don't know what's going to happen. So, those are good convos to have. Absolutely. Definitely growing. Even from the proposal to now, you know, just understanding those kinds of things, those little things. and There's a huge difference. I remember when I proposed, it's funny, it's on YouTube. Country Music Television filmed it. I painted a mural, proposed with a mural. Um, I have to see this. I'll send you the link. Um, it's <laughs> it's funny. And uh, there's a whole backstory leading up to it, too, that I can share later. But, I love uh, that so much but uh so nervous but the cool once we were done like you couldn't lie like hey we just got engaged we literally my wife walked around i'm engaged they let us into every club every restaurant it didn't matter how long the line like we went to bungalow lines out the door we're like i just y'all can get in that's so good the energy is so contagious i remember that but that title of like oh this is my fiance like girlfriend's one thing fiance is another thing but I'll tell you this, like the next coolest title is like wife. Is it? When Does it? Because I, I literally I was thinking about this yesterday with the fiance yeah. thing. And I'm like, I like that shit. I, I don't yeah. know what it is, but I li- I don't know it's, why. I, it's a stronger commitment. It's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's just it means more. It's yeah. a next level bond. Yeah. You know, what's, it's funny, though, because humans, we make up meaning to everything. But like if you just love each other, you love each other. And we decided to start adding all these things to it. But like yeah. it does make it difference like oh this is more real yeah but wife yeah the first couple of this, this is my wife yeah it was just you just like, kind of say it, it like, back to you. it's like a flex and she's like you're my husband you're like yeah. oh girl come here but i cried the entire time the entire time i walked down the aisle the entire time i was up there but i man, feel like every man the- needs to be like that and i hope and i pray that omar if you're listening to this my love Make sure you cry when you're going down the aisle. <laughs> and also cry when I'm coming down because I want you to be just as emotional as me. Because I love you. <laughs> yeah, let's go, Omar. And uh, I picked a John Legend song for us to walk down with. I hear that song now, I'm in tears. I can't even play it. It's I can just... only imagine. On In the proposal, he had a harp player Ooh, come. There you go. And all my life was on. Yeah. Lost it. Yeah. Lost it. Game over. And, and I, it was a complete surprise, too. Ours is on YouTube as well. I was so shocked walking into a full house full of humans that I did not know we were going to be there. Mm-hmm. So my photos, my engagement photos are more like shock photos. As if <laughs> I have to send it to you and you have to maybe put it in Let's, post. We'll just link up all our stuff onto the you thing. You guys yeah. have to see it. It The photo itself looks like I was getting... Sh- going down a roller coaster and just super crazy and he didn't think about it but he put me in a two-seater before he proposed and my hair was done before Uh so you know what happens and then so i'm walking in it was just like i literally was like "Ah!" you just stuck your finger in a light socket yes that's what i looked like and so all my photos came out crazy for my proposal but gotta love him i was like oh, babe you did a great job planning he really did a great job though he flew in my mom he flew in my brother my whole friend all my friends all my family were there yeah. it was our anniversary so i thought we were just going to an anniversary dinner that's amazing and um, yeah put up the photo we'll put it up right here in the video it was the craziest for experience. those that are watching yeah and that emotional aftermath was crazy too yeah, and you're so, high for like a few weeks on this. Oh, I couldn't come down either. I didn't want to. I still I still feel like it's crazy, even though it's been over a year. Yeah. So, no, I'm excited for your wedding once you do. The only, I don't like to just give frivolous advice, but the only thing I say is just have fun. Remember, it's for you. Yeah. We forget and make it for everybody else. We did ours overseas. We got married in Greece. Do you know that that's where we want to do it? It's either Italy or Greece. 
Uh, I've, I officiated one in Italy, and then we did ours in Greece. So either or is a good choice. You I have can't, to see those photos. It's not, I'll, ooh, I'll show you the photos. Do, the photos many, are epic. How many people did you have? 40 people. We kept That's it tight. Perfect. If we, if we had the, the only wedding way to here do in it. LA, it would have been huge. No, exactly. That's our problem. So another reason of doing it long distance is not everyone's going to travel, and it makes you triage the list. you got to just keep it small, like family, friends. We didn't allow plus ones. We're like, we don't want random plus ones. Nope, if you're in a relationship, come. Yeah. If not, come by yourself. We got a huge villa. We housed all the single ones. Okay. Um, and then we had it all at our villa. I flew in a chef, and our photographer was with us the whole week. Did so you have like a pre-party and an after party? Couple, or like a welcome party? Restaurant, yeah, we had a welcome dinner. Mm -hmm. uh, the after party was at the villa. Got a DJ. We were there till the sun rose. Send me the whole itinerary. Happy to. Because Greece, I thought so he was going to propose Mykonos. in Greece. So okay. ideally, oh, really? it, was, it was like, oh, let's do Santorini. But Santorini is very small and quiet. Tiny. And yeah, you can't do that there. So we did Mykonos. Okay. And then after that, we did a couple went days in Santorini. And mm -hmm. then we went to Turkey and did a couple days in Turkey. I thought he was going to propose to me when we went to Greece and I came back with no ring. I wore white that whole trip. Oh, that was a let. Ah. <laughs> it was the craziest. I was like, Mom, he didn't propose. It ain't going to happen. She, uh. she already knew two months later he was gonna. So she was like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it sucks. I don't know what's wrong with him. He's, he must be going through it or something. <laughs> Grace, if you see all my photos, I am dressed in white. I am You're dripped. My nine, dad is there. My His dad is there. It's perfect. Constantly Our family's there. ready with the cameras? Every time he went to go tie his shoe, I was like, <gasps> <laughs> and instead I walked into, <gasps> when That's it was time. Funny. My wife, the one thing she, because it's funny because that day, she had plans and she was off to go do some things. I'm like, no, baby, you need to come help me with something. So she was actually a little upset. Like, man, I got to like, d -d 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 -d. but it worked out. It she worked out. telling that, that story, but she's like, luckily I just got my nails did. I didn't even think about yes. making sure her nails were done. Gentlemen, please remember that. That is a pro tip. Please remember that. That is very important for us. You have to remember the nails and, and also the hair because this is going to be, forever no two-seater drop top no two-seater drop top before you propose and if you do do it make sure there's a hair person on site pro tip pro tip those are all pro tips that's a good one so amazing thank you for sharing of course we've been having some fun here pcos entrepreneur life dancer love and relationships and now we're getting toward the end i got a couple of questions for you oh questions I thought, okay let's go this is easy though okay what no, is it's it not. some people think it's it's hard but what two questions one is like how would you define love i would define love as forgiveness mm. and i would define love as life i feel like love like it gives life meaning so mm. it's it's the through line to everything and also love is forgiveness because being in a relationship and understanding the ins and outs or even friends family anything um or yourself forgiveness yeah. with self yeah too. forgiveness yeah. with self as well um love love is forgiveness and when you learn and when you can really hone into it it's it's magical mm. love is magical that's what it is. It's magic. It is. It's ma magic. It's energy. It's vibe. It's vibe. It is. In the Greek language, they have multiple ways of expressing love. Eros, agape, mm -hmm. and a few other ones. In, in, in English, we just say love. So yeah. I think sometimes it gets a little mis used yeah. misappropriated absolutely you know, oh i love those sneakers yeah i get that but i mean i'm talking about real, real love, love. Absolutely. and not just romantic love but it's right. not yeah love is life right love, is, love life. is zest love is forgiveness love is that anything you need it to be next question the final question what is the final question you did not give me this in the beginning. No, I didn't. I didn't. I always save it for the end. Sometimes I actually ask it at the beginning. It really depends on how the conversation jumps off. But it's it's no wrong answer, whatever comes to heart. Okay. So, Candice, mm -hmm. how do you define living a life through love? I feel like living life through love is... 
pure happiness and being able to continue to pour into yourself and mm. pour into the the loved ones around you and continuing to watch yourself and each other grow so that we can become the best versions of ourselves. Did that answer your question? I mean, did that answer your question? Listen, I love a good growing love moment. So it, 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 it's hitting the spot for me. No, it's great. I love that you said helping everyone grow yeah. also. Yeah, yeah, because it's never, it's never, purpose isn't about um, just us. There's three parts to purpose. And, you know, it's really finding yourself, it's honing in and loving on yourself. And it's also what you can do for others. So I feel like with purpose, the reason why we're all here, if love is the through line, if we can all do good, if we can all feel the vibes if we can all pour into ourselves mm. enough so that we run it over and we run it over into each other's we can all just kind of create and make beautiful beautiful art through the baseline which is love and, mm. and just kind of just be able to be at our happiest selves because at the end of the day we just want to be happy we just want to yeah. we just want to be happy while we're here we only have a certain amount of time here mm -hmm. so that's my answer there we go. Pharrell's song, Happy, on repeat. <laughs> Shout out to Pharrell. Happy. So, you know, maybe one more question. Pharrell does a reunion tour. Are you on it? Absolutely. No questions asked. Awesome. I love Pharrell. Yeah. He's the goat. He lo he loves art, too. He's a he's an art goat. And that's another thing I learned from him. Go oh, in Paris, we're on top of the, the uh, by the Eiffel Tower, sitting on top of a museum like an art museum and like doing shows for for i've never experienced anything like that in my life and i didn't realize how much goes into art yeah and how much of an incredible business it is too yeah y'all got something going on little by little little by little so absolutely congratulations to you and thank you for having me thank you. i really appreciate it and what you're doing here i'm into it thank you you're doing good in this world, and I'm, I'm, I feel very appreciative that you invited me here today. Well, I appreciate you. Thank you for coming in. I received that. <laughs> good. Dude. And where so can coming. everyone find you? You guys can find me at Candice on Instagram. I mean, yes, the only Candice on Instagram. Like, literally, C-A-N-D-I-C-E, -E, and that's it. Like, no numbers at the end, no crazy things, and I'm on TikTok and, and YouTube but just go follow me on instagram and you're you'll find everything else not gonna there. lie i wish i had just at ruben i know at least i have my name i <laughs> literally looked the other day i looked at candace and i was like what are, what other things come up i'm like god there's so many other candaces out here but i got the main the main one yeah. i used to be ti can dance t can dance and like pretty small french mm -hmm. that pretty, that my dad gave me that name it was so haitian of him <laughs> um but then you know we had to grow up a little bit so we got Candace, and that's been really cool. So make sure you guys follow me, man. Follow me. Follow the movie. Check her out. Get on the journey. <laughs> Get on the journey. And that's a wrap. That's a wrap. Now do a little dance. Whoop, 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 whoop. Thank you so much for tuning in to Live Through Love. If you love this episode, you'll love this episode.